Today we're going to be replacing a fuel injector on a 2004 GMC Yukon and the problem with our Yukon is that uh, the injector is letting in a little bit too much fuel so it starts really good in the morning but then after you drive it for a little bit and it warms up if you turn off the ignition and then soon after you turn it back on it's basically flooded and you can correct that by just pressing the accelerator all the way to the floor as you turn it on and that actually gets it started but it should just start normally but there's so much fuel in cylinder number three that it's kind of flooded so a new injector should do the trick before you put a new injector in think about adding the fuel um, cleaner into into your our fuel system cleaner into your gas tank because it's really inexpensive and easy and a lot of times it'll cure the problem it'll clean the injector um, but if you don't you can always buy just one injector to fix the problem or you could replace them all they're really expensive though they go for about 50 to 60 dollars to do the injector repair we just need the new injector or you can get a whole group of them but again they're really expensive AC Delco is a good uh, factory type brand. You need a pretty big screwdriver to use as a lever. You might need a new little rubber O-ring we'll talk about here in the video. You need an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket and a little bit of motor oil and that's it. So first thing we're gonna do is start up the engine and we're gonna pull the relay for the fuel pump so that we can get all the fuel out of the system. Start it up. Come over to the fuse box, pop this off, locate the <coughs> fuel relay, fuel pump relay, which is F slash PMP. If you notice, there's a big one and then come down one. And that's, that's the one. So when you pull that, the engine will start to choke. You just pull that, that out. Just got to wait a couple of seconds. RPMs drop off. There we go. And that's just taking fuel out of the rails so that when you uh, remove it, you won't have as much fuel leaking out. There'll still be a little bit of fuel leaking out. So if we look at the engine on this side, these are the... Um, odd, odd cylinders. So it's cylinder one, three, and uh, five, and seven. And on the other side are the even ones. So in our case, the engine diagnostic tool said that cylinder number three, the injector is sticking. So this is one, this is two, and the fuel injector is back here. What I like to do to get to it is actually remove this fuel rail so I have a little bit better access. So we'll go over today how to easily do that. So you may want to stand on something to get you up a little bit higher because this uh, engine bay is up, up a bit high. We're going to use an eight millimeter to just take off this one screw here. And once we get that off, we can take off this uh, upper cowling, which is just a uh, mainly for aesthetics, but we got to get it out of the way so we can do the repair. To get this off, you're just going to lift up and then you're going to pull towards you a little bit so these clips on the back can come off. Get that out of the way. And then to give you a little bit better access, we're going to just disconnect these clips for this wiring harness. And you can use your screwdriver to do that. We want to get off this one and this one come up underneath right here to pry it open. If this video is helping you, please consider pressing down in the lower right hand corner of your screen the subscribe button and that really helps our channel. Thank Let's push it in here. There we go. Okay, that's loose. We're going to remove this one, which is a 10 millimeter. We're going to remove these three, which are 10 millimeter. So we'll take out that screw right there. There are three of those 10 millimeters. Kind of pull this off, put it off to the side. And we're gonna finish taking off this 10 millimeter here. 
We're just trying to create a little more room to work. But off to the side, I'm gonna lift up on this harness, this wiring harness. Just gonna kind of get it off to the side here so I have a little bit better visual access on what's going on here. So now I want to remove an eight millimeter here and one in the back. On this side, you can see a little bit better. Eight millimeter here and one on this side. This is a Sch Schroeder valve right here. And if there's any fuel pressure left, if you press in on that, it'll let out the fuel. And uh, a little bit of pressure left, but it might be good to do that too before we do the next step. Removing a T20 right here, Torx 20, and this crossover fuel rail, this one. Okay, don't lose that screw, so that's a Torx 20, Torx bit. So we removed an 8 millimeter back here. Kind of see, you can see the same one on this side. And we're going to do the front one here. And that's to get this rail off, the fuel rail. And you don't have to disconnect this crossover um, to do this. Another option is you can leave that screw where it was take this little clip off too and you can disconnect this one this one this one this one and all the connectors and you can lift off this rail and this rail and this crossover as one piece that's a, that's a good way to do it a little bit harder to get everything to disconnect but definitely possible to do that though you have to also disconnect where this this fuel intake comes from this hose which is a little tricky uh, the other thing you want to think about too at this point is taking the electrical connectors off of the injectors on this side there's four of them to do that you're going to so you can see this tab where my finger is you're going to lift up on that tab that's like kind of like a preliminary release it's two steps so you lift up on that and then there's a little piece where my index finger is. I'm pushing in on that. I'm going to wiggle and lift. And that comes off. So if you look at this electrical connector, check it out. You want to bring that up first. Then you're going to press in on this little tab right there. And then you can pull it off. Still a little bit hard to come off. you got to wiggle them off. Let me try this one. I'm taking this 8 millimeter off. There's the eight millimeter, put that off to the side. And try and get some more of these electrical connectors off before I do it. Here's the one for the for the last cylinder. I lift up on the catch. That one did come out pretty easy. I'll try this one again. Lift it up on the catch, push in on the tab. And that one did come off. So we got three of them off. This is for cylinder number one. Lift up on the tab. Squeeze in. That one came off. So we have all four off. Now we just want to use our big screwdriver to give us a little upward leverage to get this off. And we're going to disconnect this EGR cap back here. I'm going to lift up on it. It's just a rubber cap. lift. I take that pipe up a little bit to give me more room to get this crossover off. I'm going to lift up on the crossover. You'll notice there's an o-ring in there. There we go. A little bit of fuel came out. So I'll get this underneath. A little upward pressure. That one came out. i do it over here too. That one came out, so the rail's out. Now I have to carefully 
guided out of all of this stuff. So I got to make sure this one crossover is out of the way. If this video is helping you. Please consider pressing down in the lower right hand corner of your screen the subscribe button, and that really helps our channel. Thanks. I'm going to lift up on it now, try to guide this out. Not spilling all that fuel. There we go. Just got to get underneath these wires and wire harness. All right, there we go. I'm going to pour that out into a container. So we can see still a fair amount of fuel in there. Now that we have the rail out, it's actually pretty easy to switch out the injectors or the one injector that's giving you trouble. I'm going to put a little bit of motor oil on the O-ring for each of the injectors that I'll be putting in. A little bit coating it around the perimeter. Go to the next one. Makes it a little bit easier for them to seat. It's good to do with any time you do O-rings. These are the same injectors that were in there before. We just cleaned them up a little bit because uh, they still we're working except for just the one number three just had a clog in it okay those are all done so i'll use a got the fuel rail it usually sits like this right i'm going to take these clips off the back put a standard head screwdriver in there and you could you could do this while the rail is still on too get that out that off. I'm going to pull off this injector. Put that off to the side. Pop in the new one. Kind of twist and push right as it goes in. Just twist and push as it goes in. Get that nice and seated. Get the clip on there. Okay, got it. That one's in. Maxed in now, right? It's all the way in, nice and flat. Looks good. I'll take out this older one. Get behind that, use a little leverage to clip out. There we go. And now we're going to grab this one, pull it, wiggle, twist. Until it lets go. There we go. Sometimes you can put, if it's really stubborn, you can put like a needle nose pliers in here and give you a little bit of leverage. Okay, put that down. Put in the new one. Oh, upside down. <clears throat> and twist. Push it all the way in and seat it as low as it can go. Have the clip back in. If you look at the clip, it's kind of that concave area. That one's going to point toward the top of the rail. Let's see. I think that one's a little bit offline. Let me try it again. I gotta line it up so go, these two metal prongs go on this side of this central plastic piece right here. All right, that's great. 
If you think about the one that's in the furthest to the back, number seven, if you want to twist that a little bit towards you, makes it easier to get that plug on. Doing the last one, the fourth one now, I got the clip off, pull it out, new one goes in, already got the lubrication on there. So you have the silver side goes up, the black side goes down, in, pivot, twist. Get the clip in there. So again, you can do this with this rail still in the vehicle um, by just lifting up on the rail a little bit to get to one particular cylinder, but I prefer to get the rail out because it's just easier to do it. Okay, so we have the injectors in now. We're doing good. We're going to put the rail back in and just put it all back together. Put a little bit of oil right inside here just to make it easier for that o-ring to sit in there. So I'm going to put it back in. It's going to go like that. We're going to just fish it underneath all this stuff. All right, so we're getting the, in, the rail back into position. Feed it into those little holes there. Take your time. It's things out of the way to be able to do it. Get this back over there. That preliminary wise. And you can take a ganter at what's happening in the back here. Get this out of the way. This rail is going to go underneath. This plastic will go underneath that metal right there. All right, get my back injectors aligned. They're aligned now. Get number three aligned. One's aligned. Three's aligned. Five is aligned. Seven's aligned. So they're all ready to go in. Now I just want to put some downward pressure, kind of wiggle, get this rail to sit all the way back down again. Make sure nothing's in the way of it. You put this eight millimeter back in here in the back. Get it all lined up. Get it started by hand to screw it in. Okay, I got an eight millimeter in the front. Right here, I'll put that one back in. Get it started by hand. Okay, I'll go ahead and tighten those up. Just tightening up that second eight millimeter. So we got them both on nice and snug. So we're gonna go ahead and put on the electrical connector to the back cylinder, cylinder number seven. I'm gonna push it in and just make sure it sits all the way in there nice and tight. Pushed it all the way in. Do our next one, number five. Clicked in. Next one, number three. Clicks in, and I'm gonna push the little. I clicked it in, but then I push down on that to to seat it down in there. Here's number one, all the way down. Then I lock it in with that one. Make sure they're all locked in. Got it. Okay, so that's pretty good. Next part. We're going to get this crossover rail to go back in. We have to make this um, O-ring, you guys can see it right here, we have to make that sit down a little bit, so I'm going to give it a little push. So we're going to use this little tool to carefully get this O-ring down. I'm going to lift up a little bit on the rail, 
I want to get this to sit down in there a little bit deeper. So I loosened that number eight uh, bolt back there so I could lift up a little bit here. I'm going to lift up just a fraction and then I'm going to push this o-ring deeper down into the channel not real deep I'm just want to come down where it's below all the way around it's below being flush at the top because it's actually in the channel and when it gets loaded up it's going to create a better seal that's a lot of pressure and we don't want gas to leak out there so I'm pushing it down in the back there Again, I don't want to have to go down really far. I just got to get it below being flush. And now as I add the downward pressure, it's going to sit way down in there. That's good. So I don't see any O-ring anymore. I just see this metal flange. That's really good. I'm going to go ahead and add this piece back in. You see how it has a little lip going down? You want you want that down, you don't want that to be going up, you want it to be going down. That helps to push the metal flange down harder. So it's gonna go in like that. And we're gonna add that eight millimeter right there and singe it down. I'm sorry, that's not an eight millimeter, that's a Torx 20. So put that Torx 20 in. And just prior to doing that, and just putting it in preliminarily, I'm gonna tighten up that eight millimeter again in the back. That's gonna create a lot of downward pressure just by itself. So I'm back to that eight millimeter in the back. Let me get that one nice and tight. That's holding down the rail in the back, but it's also, it's also pushing down on this crossover piece so that it has a better tight seal with the um, plastic fuel rail. What I'll do next is, before I finish everything, I'll go ahead and put the, nice and tight. I'll go ahead and put the um, relay back in the EGR, I'm putting that EGR cap, you guys see this in the back, I'm putting that back rubber piece back on the metal, the wiggle, push down. I'm going to tighten up this one so it goes really down in there tight. So I'm pushing down on this crossover metal rail with my thumb, keeping it low so I can add this pressure. feels pretty tight. So we'll go ahead and give it a leak test now before we do the final assembly. And that's just so we can see if there's any point where the pressure's leaking out. Kind of get this back where it's supposed to go. Right there. Okay. Fuel pump relay back in. Almost a little burned up there, huh? I wonder if that's time to get a new relay. These are the same part, so if you ever have a bad fuel pump relay, you can switch out with one of these other ones, because the fuel pump, if it goes out, you're stuck, but you can always use one of these, because it's if you notice, it's the same part number. We're gonna put that in, wiggle it all the way down, and we'll give it a leak test, see how it's doing. We got it started up and we're just looking for if there's any gas leaking here looks good and down where the injectors are usually you'll be able to smell it I don't see anything I don't smell anything so looks like we got it okay so we're just getting this clip back in just to hold that wiring harness where it is just gonna pinch those together and I'm gonna put this 10 millimeter uh, nut back on right here. We just took that off just to get it, make it easier to get to what we were doing. Um, not critical though. 
tighten that up. All right, and we're going to put on this part is where it catches that upper piece. Screws lined up. Those are also 10 millimeter. So just to save you time and money, I would again try the uh, fuel injection. I know Seafoam makes a really good product, a fuel injection cleaner that you put in your gas tank. And that might do the trick to unstick your injector. But one way you know you have a, an injector that's sticking is it will start when it's cold, but once it's warmed up, it uh, just cranks and cranks and cranks unless you unless you hit the uh, you hit the accelerator all the way, then it starts, and that's a sign of a leaking injector, one that isn't atomizing the fuel. It's just like liquid fuel coming in, and yeah, a lot of times a fuel injector, uh, fuel injector cleaner system will do that. It's easy to do this procedure. It's not a big deal, but they're really expensive. If you ever find any that are cheaper, like way cheaper, like you can get like eight of them for 50 bucks, it could be that it is a forgery coming in from China and they probably won't function very well. I'm just tightening up that eight millimeter. And this car is back from 2004, still running good. Just has kind of a um, rough idle was a problem. And then it showed that cylinder number three was misfiring uh, due to in an injector problem. All right, we'll go ahead and close it up. Before I did the repair, I coated my hands with some of this liquid stuff and let it dry. So sometimes it helps you on the cleanup because your hands have a little layer of soap on them already. I think where my hands touched the gasoline though, it probably knocked off that, that soap. But the other parts cleaned up good, just the fingertips got a little gas on them. So then you have to do some more scrubbing, but that's a good trick. Also wearing gloves works. I usually end up tearing the gloves, but you can just put a little bit of that liquid on and get it coating, especially on the, like the cuticles all around the fingertips. Let it dry after about five minutes, and then you can do the repair, and most of the grease and dirt will just come right off. Pretty good trick. Watching our video, and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. And also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you. To contact me at the email listed below which is scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com with any of your questions. And also, if you need to have a uh, FaceTime meeting with me or a Zoom meeting, you can click on one of the links below in the description and we can set up a 15 minute or 30 minute video conference where we can work on your appliance problem. So thanks again for all your support and for watching the video.